Hello everybody, welcome back to a new video. My name is Sarah and today I'm going to be talking about the books that I read in April. Um, so this month was a little bit of a slower reading month. I only read four books. I kind of count every month as like a win in terms of um, reading and everything because it's, I think it's really important to remember that like it doesn't matter how many books you read each month. What matters is that you are enjoying the stories and you're reading for the sake of the stories. And kind of it's hard to remember that when you spend a lot of time on the bookish side of social media because you see everybody's reading so many books and you know all these other different books. Maybe more newer releases than you are or you know more arcs than you are or whatever. I think it becomes really easy for your brain to create a sort of competition out of reading um, but it's really important to remember that like you should not be reading for the sake of like numbers. You should be reading for the sake of loving reading and enjoying it. So it really doesn't matter how many books you read a month. Um, and sometimes I have to remind myself that you know when I looked back and realized wow I only read four books this month when typically the least I read is five. I read anywhere from five to seven and I'm like well you know, I did have other things going on and it's okay to kind of get in a little bit of a reading slump sometimes or to take a longer time reading a story um, as long as you are reading for the sake of the story. So anyway, enough of a babble. Uh, just thought I'd throw that out there. Uh, if anybody else needs the reminder, because I know I needed to remind myself that, um, you know, a couple days ago, so it's always good to remember. But uh, enough babbling, I'm just gonna jump in and discuss the books that I read this month. Um, I'll give you kind of a synopsis and then my general thoughts and my uh, overall rating that I gave them. So the first book that I read this month is An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. So this is a YA uh, fantasy romance. So this is set in a world where the fair folk or fae coexist with humans um, and they kind of live in tandem with one another and the fair folk are not allowed to, they cannot physically like create anything. So they can't cook, they can't make their own clothes, they can't do any sort of like arts and crafts type of um, activities, anything like that. And so they uh, hire humans to do those things and they pay them in the form of different enchantments. And so our main character in this book, Isabel, is a renowned uh, portrait artist and one day the Autumn Prince comes to get his portrait done. And when she's painting him, she ends up painting human sorrow into his portrait and that is kind of a sign of weakness in the fair folk and so the autumn prince then um, decides to uh, kind of arrest her and take her back to the autumn court um, in order to try her for her crimes. And so on their way there they kind of run into a bit of a mess of danger and during their journey of course there's a love story that evolves. Um, I really really ended up loving this book a lot. It's really short but Rogerson manages to pack a lot into this book in terms of world building and kind of uh, character creation and story creation. Um, it's overall a pretty simple story. It's one of those stories that feels kind of low stakes like you know that it's going to probably turn out okay. Um, but what I really, really loved about this book was the world building. Rogerson manages to create a really rich world that feels really well developed but is somehow still contained into just this short little story. Most of the time with really short fantasies I feel like the world is not developed enough. However, Rogerson managed to develop this world really well while still staying in our very closed circuit story and I was really impressed by that. Um, I absolutely adored her writing style. It feels, for lack of a better word, enchanting. Um, it's very beautifully written. I would say it kind of would classify more as flowery and lyrical writing, but I don't think it's like overly flowery. Um, I think it's just enough where it kind of helps set the atmosphere of the story. I also really did love our characters a lot. Isabel, she's feisty. She's one of those heroines that kind of is not one that like picks up a sword and fights her way through things. Um, she's one that it's more uh, her cleverness gets her out of sticky situations and I really liked her for that. Um, I think we don't get enough 
YA protagonists, uh, particularly female YA protagonists, that, you know, just rely on their wits solely. We get a lot more that just are like, let me just quick pick up the sword and suddenly I know how to use it. Or I've been, you know, learning how to use swords all my life type of YA protagonist. So I really liked how we kind of have one that's a bit more average, I guess, in the sort of uh, fighting sense. And then the Autumn Prince I found to be hysterically funny. He's incredibly vain and dramatic, but he reminds me a lot of Howl from Howl's Moving Castle. So if you've seen that movie, um, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, where his vanity and his drama is uh, almost endearing um, and just kind of really entertaining. I do want to say that the romance is kind of insta-lovey. I know not a lot of people like that. I'm typically one that doesn't like insta-love. However, I think that for the sake of this story, it was pulled off pretty well um, and it did kind of fit with the story well enough. So I did really enjoy it. Um, I am really, really looking forward to continuing on to Rogerson's other book, Sorcery of Thorns. Um, I know I have that on my May TBR, so I'm really, really hoping that I enjoyed that. And then she also has another book, I think it's Vespertine, it's coming out in the fall. So really excited to see kind of where she goes as an author because I think she's going to be one that I really kind of cling to and try to follow along. Um, through her career as a writer. Um, so I ended up giving this four stars and I highly recommend it if you're looking for kind of a softer, fluffy fantasy romance, because um, I think it's really good for that. So the next book that I read is a YA historical fantasy and that is Descendant of the Crane by Joan Hay. So this book follows a young princess, Princess Hesena, and she hasn't ever wanted to be a princess. Um, she kind of just, you know, wants to live her own life. She doesn't want to rule. Um, and and one day her father the king dies and so she's suddenly thrust into queenhood um, and has to kind of grapple with that and then on top of that she discovers that um, she doesn't think that her father died of natural causes like everybody else assumes um, she thinks that he was murdered and so she starts to push for this trial and goes seeks out the aid of a soothsayer which is illegal because soothsayers and magic in general were outlawed um, years and years ago but she seeks out the aid of a soothsayer in order to try to get kind of a lead on who may have killed her father and through the soothsayer's help and a um, convicted criminal's help she starts to unravel the mystery behind her father's death. One thing to keep in mind is that this story so it starts out as a murder trial and it really blows up into something much much more. Um, I really enjoyed this book. It is a rather slow paced book. It's much more of a political fantasy instead of like a sword fighting action packed magic packed story. There is magic involved in this with the soothsayers but what's really interesting is that this fantasy world is much more centered around the lack of magic than necessary, necessarily the um, ways that magic kind of creates the structure of the world, if that makes sense. I feel like a lot of fantasy novels, um, when there's magic involved, it kind of um, plays a big part in like the day-to-day -day lives of the citizens of the world and in the politics and just kind of the way the commerce works and such. Um, where in, as this ca in this case, since Susan and magic has been um, deemed illegal, the world has really been structured around the lack of magic now. Um, so it was really interesting to kind of read about that. Um, and this world is really centered around um, kind of a kind of the history of the world. Um, that's really what builds it for it. Like I said, it is a very slow paced book, um, but I do think that once it branches off past the kind of trial portion of the story, it does pick up speed a lot and it did kind of grab my interest a little bit more than it did back when it was just the trial part. I did enjoy that part and I was rather interested, 
but I felt myself uh, moving through the story much faster once we really started to kick into the meat and bones of the book. I really loved Hisena as a character. I loved how she's another one that kind of, she, so obviously as royalty, she did learn how to defend herself with, um, you know, weapons and stuff, but that's not her strength at all, and really what her strength is just her, um, her wit and her, uh, her cleverness again. So I really loved how focused and, like, steadfast she was on, like, searching for the truth. That was a really kind of made her character, is that she really stuck to her guns on what she knew was right and what she knew, like, needed to be uh, kind of brought out into the open and really laid bare in front of the public. This was another one where I really enjoyed Joan Hay's writing. It is a bit more lyrical, but uh, again, it adds to the atmosphere a lot. One thing to note about this book is that this is a standalone novel, however, it does not end as if it were a standalone. Um, due to kind of a bunch of issues uh, with the publisher and how this kind of story was purchased, like in her contract that she signed, she was only given the ability to write this as a standalone. So I would love for this to be continued. Obviously, I did really, I did enjoy it. Um, and I do think that this story deserves to be continued and fully finished. However, it uh, was wrapped up enough that I think um, while it's not a completely satisfying and cleanly tied up ending, I do think that it is um, done well enough that it can be considered a standalone and stand well on its own. Um, and I think that the way that it was ended is pretty bold uh, for a YA especially, but even just a general book. So I do recommend this if you're looking for a more politically based fantasy, and I did end up giving this three and a half stars. The third book that I read this month was We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. Um, so this is the first in a duology and it's set in a world where um, there's this kind of sinister magical forest plaguing the country um, and we follow our two main characters. Um, the first character is called the Hunter and it, she is a woman disguised as a man who goes into the forest to hunt and bring back food for her people. And then the second character is the Prince of Death. Um, so he is the prince of the kingdom and he is forced to be an assassin um, and forced into kind of a persona of zero compassion and at his father's whim. One day the hunter gets sent on this quest to look for this artifact um, that is past the forest on this island that's said to be like kind of like haunted by all these like monstrous creatures. In hopes of finding the artifact that is said to um, remove this cursed forest from the land and then the prince is sent after her in order to um, murder her and take the artifact for the king himself um, once the huntress finds it. In general, I enjoyed this story enough. However, I wanted to like it so much more than what I actually did. It's hard for me to explain kind of what it is about this story that kind of dampen my enjoyment of it. I think a lot of it has to do with the world felt like it had the beginnings of being well developed, but it was lacking a very solid foundation to kind of tie everything together. I loved the idea of the plot. I found it really interesting. I loved the idea of the world. The characters I enjoyed. I thought that they were well written and I thought the dynamics between the characters were, were well written. I especially like the backstories of the hunter and the prince of death, especially the prince of death's backstory and kind of his whole character. He was one that I found really uh, found to be really easy to get emotionally attached to and really root for. However, I just the lack of the cohesiveness of the world really kind of ruined it for me and it felt like there was a solid chunk of the story where there wasn't really a lot happening. I felt like there should have been more action and more kind of 
uh, run-ins with all these different creatures and kind of more bloody high stakes tense feeling. It just wasn't quite there for me. The ending was very interesting. I am intrigued enough and I do think I plan to eventually pick up the second book. Just not right away. I'm not quite sure when I'll get to it. Um, but it's not, it's not like I didn't like it enough to want to continue the series. It's just I think I am not invested enough that I'm going to prioritize the second book anytime soon. I did end up giving this three stars because like I said, I thought the story was generally interesting and I did like the characters and their dynamics a lot. I'm hoping maybe when I do pick up the second book that maybe that world building cohesiveness does come into play a lot more and maybe we do get a lot more of the action that I was looking for. So the fourth and final book that I read this month was actually an arc of The Wolf and the Woodsman by Ava Reed. Um, so thank you so much to NetGalley and the publishers for granting me access to this book. Um, it comes out June 8th and I am going to just read you the actual synopsis on Goodreads um, because there is a lot to unpack in the synopsis and I just want to make sure that I give you a good enough idea of what this book is about. So it says, inspired by Hungarian history and Jewish mythology follows a young pagan woman with hidden powers and a one-eyed captain of the woodsman as they form an unlikely alliance to thwart a tyrant. In her forest veiled pagan village, Yvike is the only woman without power, making her an outcast clearly abandoned by the gods. The villagers blame her corrupted bloodline. Her father was a holy man, one of the much loathed servants of the fanatical king. When soldiers arrive from the holy order of woodsmen to claim a pagan girl for the king's blood sacrifice, Evike is betrayed by her fellow villagers and surrendered. But when monsters attack the woodsmen and their captive en route, slaughtering everyone but Evike and the cold one-eyed captain, they have no choice but to rely on each other. Except he's no ordinary woodsman, he's the disgraced prince, Gaspar Barani, whose father needs pagan magic to consolidate his power. Gaspar fears that his cruelly zealous brother plans to seize the throne and instigate a violent reign that would damned the pagans and the Huli alike. As the son of a reviled foreign queen, Gaspar understands what it's like to be an outcast and he and Avike make a tenuous pact to stop his brother. As their mission takes them from the bitter northern tundra to the smog-choked capital, their mutual loathing slowly turns to affection bound by a shared history of alienation and oppression. However, trust can easily turn to betrayal and as Avike reconnects with her estranged father and discovers her own, hi her own hidden magic, she and Gaspar are need to decide whose side they're on and what they're willing to give up for a nation that never cared for them at all. So this is Reed's debut and this is a phenomenal debut. So right away I was absolutely blown away by Reed's writing style. I think it is important to note that this is a very flowery and lyrical writing style so kind of keep that in mind going into it if that's not necessarily your thing. Um, however, I do think that this writing style really added a lot to the story. Um, it really made the imagery just so much more vivid. It, I found myself sinking into this world extremely quickly because of how vivid the imagery was. Um, it was absolutely gorgeous. And then on the other side of the spectrum, the gore was atrociously disgusting. Um, I found myself cringing and like kind of gagging a couple of times because of how well she was able to evoke this just disgusting goriness. I thought that she did a really great job. Like, and I say that entirely as a compliment. That is entirely a compliment. This story, so it has a very folklore feel to it. Um, we run into a lot of folklore creatures and I feel like this story is told through stories, through the stories of the of the different religious groups um, kind of all pulled together to create the world. Um, so you've got the different pagan groups, you've got the people who follow the Pact of Faith, um, which is kind of the main religion that's taking over the kingdom, and then you have the Yahuli people. And so these three groups, um, all of their stories and all of their religious practices are really what make up this world and the core of this novel in general. Um, 
Reed really takes a lot of time to look at how religion really plays a big impact in society and people's relationships with one another. Um, how people really take religion and use it as kind of an excuse for their own cruelty. There's also the look at like what is taking religious righteousness too far and kind of where where are you crossing the line with upholding your religion when it starts to impact others in a negative way. And then there's also the look of like what does it mean to not belong solely to just one group of people? What does it mean to suddenly identify with multiple groups of people and how maybe some people suddenly meet Think that that means that you don't belong to any group of people. Um, there's just a lot that's really tackled in this book and I thought that Reed did it in a very um, graceful way. This is a very raw story. There is a lot of very dark topics that are tackled so keep in mind there are a few trigger warnings. Um, I will list them down below in the description um, if you want to check them out. Kind of a quick little dive into my thoughts on the characters. And this is gonna kind of be a little complicated to explain. So I felt like the characters were well written enough. I never 100% became super invested in them. However, that did not impact my enjoyment of this story at all. So I usually much prefer character driven stories over like solely plot driven stories. This was one of those stories that I felt like it was driven by the character's actions and not just them reacting to things. So it is character driven. However, I feel like it's much more focused around the story itself than necessarily the individual characters, if that makes sense. So it didn't bother me that I didn't get completely invested in these characters and get completely attached because I was so invested in the story itself. I found it just to be beautifully written. Um, the pacing felt very steady. It wasn't overly fast. It wasn't slow. It was just a very steady pace that really allowed for Reed to kind of take a look at all these different um, angles and topics within the story. I do just really think that this is an important story for people to read. I think it's beautifully constructed and written and I um, was incredibly impressed with this story and I think Reed has a phenomenal start to their career and I'm really, really excited to see where they continue to go with their career. I think the best way to kind of give a quick little description of it is that if you like Nina and Matthias from Six of Crows and you like their relationship and their story arc, if you add in the Bear and the Nightingale and then um, the political turmoil from the Poppy War and a little splash of the Witcher, you will get kind of the general atmosphere of this story. Just all of those different components were really brought together really well um, within this book and I did end up giving it four and a half stars um, and I highly highly recommend you to pick up this book when it comes out June 8th. So these are the books plus The Wolf and the Woodsman that I read in the month of April. Um, so a little bit of a shorter list but that doesn't mean that it's any less of an enjoyable list. Um, I think overall I had a pretty good reading month. You know, a couple average books, a couple standout books. I'd love to hear in the comments below if you've read any of these books or if you're interested in any of them and you're looking to pick them up soon. Um, let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you consider sticking around and subscribing. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!